ham sandwich, pet hamster. Both of these contain the word ham, but both are completely different. And if you pick up one of them, expecting it to be the same as the other, then you're going to be in for a very confusing experience. And that is pretty much the mentality you should have when thinking about 5-MeO DMT versus NN DMT. These things are not the same at all. And so the dosages, the experience, and what you can expect to get out of that experience need very different approaches. So make yourselves comfortable and let's talk about 5-MeO DMT. <laughs> I'm going to divide this up into several sections to try and address all the missing bits of information and the questions that people sent me about that recent 5-MEO experience. And I'll put some timestamps in the description below. But here's what I'll be covering. Dosage and administration. The difference between NN and 5-MEO. The question, is 5-MEO better than NN? And has doing 5-MEO changed my views? So. Let's start with the technical details around dosages and how I took that dose. And most of you will be aware that I've been playing around a lot recently with electronic vaping devices, in particular the eMesh. And so it will become as no surprise that that was my weapon of choice when it came to my 5-MeO trip. Now I already made a video praising just how good this solution is, but let me just get this on record. Wow. I mean like, wow. This solution is completely insane in how efficient and convenient it is to use. So much so that honestly, I am done with glass pipes and lighters. Now, just to be clear here, I'm not saying that the resulting experience is any different. So it's not like the eMesh opens up a whole new dimension of psychedelic enlightenment. What it does do though, is just remove all the faff and variability of lighters and what I've come to realize is just how much substance was going to waste in those glass pipes. Because with this being so efficient, the amounts needed are a lot smaller than what you might think you need. So to answer the question around dosages, what was the amount that triggered my experience in that previous video? And it was seven milligrams of lab made 5-MeO, which would be considered a light to common size dose but when used with the eMesh, it just completely floored me. I think the message here is that if you're coming from the world of glass pipes, then you really need to rethink your dosages if you start using one of these devices. So forget what you thought you knew and start small. Next, I wanna talk about the DMT part of 5-MeO DMT, because it straight away sets up this strong expectation about how these substances are related, that they are siblings, or at least cousins, when in reality, I think it's more like they are a completely different species. In terms of similarity, what we could say is that they are both substances with a short duration that induce a total replacement of your waking reality. But it's the nature of that reality, the place they take you to, where the differences become very apparent. So let's start with the easy one to describe, NNDMT, which is what most people are referring to whenever we say DMT. And so from here on, I will simply refer to NNDMT as DMT and 5-MeO DMT as 5-MeO. Okay, so it's easy for me to describe DMT because I've done so many videos covering the different aspects of it, from being transported across the galaxy and meeting aliens to the cosmic absurdity of the great joke of existence. I actually have a playlist purely about my DMT experiences, which I'll link to up there somewhere. So if you want the full details of those experiences, go check that out. But to summarize, the experience that I've had with DMT have been a privilege to experience. They are something I will value until my dying day. A big part of my enjoyment of these experiences comes from just how much fun they are. There is this very obvious, playful, mischievous, joyous element to it. And as an adult in my mid forties, who's been through some shit, then to feel that childlike awe and wonder as you're taking this narrative beyond imagination, it's a gift. So if DMT is all of that, then how would I describe 5-MeO? And I think the simplest way I could put it 
is that 5-MeO is everything that DMT is not. It's not out there, it's in here. It's not complex and mind-blowing, it's very simple and laid bare. It's not rapid and chaotic, it's slow and deliberate. And there aren't external entities, there's just this internal oneness. Now I want to be clear that these are just general observations based on my personal experience. It's not some kind of fundamental truth that I'm trying to preach. And I've been around the block enough times to know that there's considerable overlap in these experiences. So please, don't get triggered if your personal experience differs from my own. That's part of the magic of us all being individuals in that we can interpret things differently. Still, I think there's enough there for you to get the basic gist of how different these substances are and how we really need to mentally decouple this preconceived idea that 5-MeO is just like DMT, but with a slice of lemon and a cocktail umbrella. It isn't. Now, before I tried it, I was as guilty of this as the next person. I mean, the DMT part is right there in the name. How are we not supposed to conflate these two things? I don't know, but unconflate them we must. And hopefully this video can be part of spreading that awareness. For those who are interested in a much more detailed breakdown of 5-MeO, what it does and doesn't do, then I would strongly recommend the documentary Buffo Alvarez Reloaded, which is available for free here on YouTube. And despite the name, it does cover synthetic 5-MeO in great depth as well as Buffo. So if you're interested in this substance, then I consider that essential viewing, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Also, just to do a quick shameless plug, I recently interviewed the director of that documentary and we talk about all this kind of stuff, so go and check that out. Okay, so moving on. One question I have been asked a few times is, is 5-MeO better than DMT? And the simple answer here is, I don't honestly think that any experience is better than any other. And I think it's kind of reductionist to try and put them in some sort of hierarchy of bestness. You know, I think it's obvious to anyone just how much I love DMT. But there was a long period over several years where I didn't touch the stuff, and instead I was more focused on ayahuasca and mushrooms. Now that's not because one is better than the other, it's just that I had different needs from these experiences at different times in my life. You know, it's all just tools in the toolbox, and you should go with whatever works for you in any particular circumstance. And finally, I want to address those guys who asked me if my 5-MeO experience has changed my mind somehow around the topic of spirituality. And to that, I would say that if you think I am, or have ever been, anti-spirituality, then you are simply confused. I have stated many times that I consider myself as someone who is exploring my own spirituality. I think it's a very important part of our human experience, and I have an entire video on that subject which you should definitely check out. I think it's one of my best. And so long story short, no, I have never had a problem with spirituality. But of course, as with many things, spirituality can be co-opted into a smokescreen for peddling bullshit, often by some guru who's trying to leverage spirituality as a means of promoting their own ideas. And so now that we've established that I have zero problem with spirituality as a concept, then I think the real question that's being asked here is, has my experience with 5-MeO made me less critical of certain gurus? And the answer to that is, well, it depends on what that guru is saying. You know, if they're talking about a subjective experience and they're looking to gain personal meaning, then I've always been supportive of that. But if they start claiming supernatural abilities, divine mandates, or have dangerous practices, then I'm going to continue to call them out on their obvious nonsense, as we all should. If anything, being exposed to experiences like 5-MeO, which is so elegant and humbling, it really highlights to me that we need to have more honest conversations around these topics so that we can put the brakes on some of these more outlandish claims. Because to take an incredible experience, like what I've just described in that previous video, and to come out of that claiming messianic knowledge and superhuman abilities, it's a grotesque caricature, and to bundle such claims as spiritual or sacred is simply bad comedy. Now, I've always been sympathetic to people who have these kind of delusions, because these experiences, by their nature, are mind-bending. It's not easy to stay grounded through them, but being sympathetic isn't the same thing as giving someone a free pass. 
This psychedelic community, it is a fledgling community and we need to sort out the good ideas from the bad ideas. So critical thinking is healthy. Challenging outrageous claims from would-be authority figures is healthy. And being able to laugh at ourselves is healthy. I sincerely believe this. And as we go through this psychedelic renaissance, then this community is going to have to mature and adapt. Now, I don't mean to imply that there's anything wrong here, just that things are changing around us in a big way. Like ayahuasca retreats are now happening all over the world. Mushrooms are being legalized. DMT trials are popping up at major scientific institutions. As all of this happens, we have to be able to discuss the ideas that enter the discourse. And those ideas should be able to stand up to a bit of simple scrutiny. That's how we make progress. So no, I am probably not going to change my tune around certain claims from certain people because I don't think those claims hold water, no matter how much 5-MeO you smoke. So, short answer, I will always continue to push back when I see someone getting carried away with their ego. So that's all for this video. I do want to say a big thank you to all the lovely comments I received on my videos, in particular the previous 5-MeO one. I do read all the comments, I don't always get the chance to respond to them, but I do when I can. If you do want to engage in conversation with me, then we have a great little community over on Discord, on Reddit, and if you want to join this list of awesome people, then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. We have monthly virtual meetups where we have a right good chinwag and you get your name in the credits as well as some bonus content. Okay, so I think that's it for this one. I'll catch you guys next time on Adeptus Psychonautica.